Erev Tov, Chabri, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. Breaking news once again. It is not being reported in the mainstream media. You're probably not even going to be hearing it in the European media either. But you are going to hear it here on Israeli News Live. Is NATO looking to start a war with Russia? Well, Russia is talking about preemptive strike on NATO forces. It is serious, guys. And speaking of Russia talking about a preemptive strike, we are about, Israeli News Live is about to go in the middle of it all. We are going into Poland to cover NATO and what they are doing in Poland, as well as Pope Francis' visit there to Russia, meeting with the young people there, as well as his uh, trip to Auschwitz, where he will be speaking at Auschwitz, which the irony of it all is the Vatican's involvement with Hitler under Pope Pius XII. Anyway, let's get right into the serious part of the news that is breaking that is in Russian language that the world is not even aware of. Uh, Worldcrisis.ru, July 26, 2016. The title translated from, uh, from uh, Russian to English, Paul Craig Roberts warns after a leak of information in a German newspaper, Armageddon gets closer. Now, guys, we broke this to you the other day. And of course, it's already been broken on, on other medias as well, Reuters, RT News, etc., breaking the story about Germans declaring the Russians an enemy. All right, but what you're fixing to find out is Russia's response to that very leaked information. Uh, according to the article here, and again, translating from Russia, Russian with my wife's help as well, Western public does not know this, but Washington and its European vassals are convinced that Russia is preparing for an attack. Eric uh, Zos reports on the leak of information in the German newspaper about the decision of the Bundeswehr to announce that the Russian hostiles, excuse me, to announce that the Russians are hostile to the German state. According to a report published on June 6 in the German Economic News, the German government is preparing for war against Russia. It does have a draft report of the Bundeswehr, which announced that Russia, a hostile state, reports that the Russian Secret Service obviously knew about it. All right, now let's get into the, to, to the deep of this now, guys. Before publishing it in the newspaper, a strong message of protest was sent to Berlin. The chairman of the Russian State Duma Committee on Foreign Affairs, Alexei Pushkov, wrote on Twitter, German government's decision to declare Russia an enemy points to the dependence of Merkel on the Obama administration. Washington could use the military buildup to pressure Putin into sending Russian opposition to the signing sort treaty. However, it looks to some purely Russian politicians such as Vladimir uh, Zeranovsky, like Hitler on the border with the Soviet Union in 1941. Now, Zeranovsky said that German troops on the border with Russia will cause a preemptive strike after there will be nothing left of the German and NATO troops. The more NATO soldiers on your territory, the faster you will die. All until recently, until, until you will, and basically the way he's trying to say this, until you will remove all the NATO troops from your territory. Now you're going to actually get to see some of where he speaks on public television in Russia. You'll see that in a few moments. We'll go to that in a minute. Now, Russian Foreign Ministry Sergei Lavrov expressed his uh, chagrin of Washington's belief in the need to use force and coercion rather than diplomacy. It is ill-advised for Washington. Russia is not considered capable of diplomacy. Uh, this is just absurd. What's happening, guys? All right, now... Watch this right here. Indeed, uh, Zera Novosky has already come to this understanding, and perhaps Putin too, he says. As I wrote, Putin recently rebuked corrupt Western media in their role in fueling nuclear war. Putin said that Russia will not allow the stationing of American missiles in Poland and Romania. 
He reported it to Washington and, and Ibetsloma, Polish and the Romanian government. However, as Putin himself noted, they do not hear. Listen, listen, let's look at the very meeting he had. Now, this is what Alex Jones broke himself trying to bring attention to the American politicians, the American people of what the pre uh, President Putin had to say. Notice on your screen, the Iranian threat does not exist, but the NATO missile defense is being positioned in Europe. Okay. Now he says, that means we were right when we said that their reasons are not genuine. They were not being open with us, always referring to the Iranian threat in order to justify this system. Once again, they lied to us. Now the system is functioning, being loaded with missiles. As you, journalists, should know, these missiles are put in capsules, which are used in the Tomahawk long-range missile system. So he's speaking to journalists. He continues on in his statement here. So these are being loaded with missiles that can penetrate territories within 500 kilometer range. Now he goes on as he speaks in here that they know, and he said the Americans know when we, that know that we know, that we know they're going to advance these systems to a thousand kilometers. We know the very date of states of when that will happen. And then they will endanger Russia's nuclear deterrent. All right, now he's there meeting with American journalists on this, guys. And he's already doing that. This is what this is what this guy is actually say, stating here. Here's a picture of the guy right here. This is uh, Zarinbosky. And I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name right or not, but in a moment I'll share with you who he actually is so you understand he carries weight in his words, all right? Again, this is on worldcrisis.ru. This was uh, uh, came out Russian news yesterday. He says, because of the arrogance of Washington, was not able to take seriously Putin's warning. If Washington will persist, he will get a preemptive strike, said Zaranovsky. Guys, this is, this is very serious. This is no joke, okay? Now, again, let me show you, remind you, they're building up for, this is not just NATO in Eastern Europe. This here is in Ukraine. These were the tanks that we shared with you the other day. The tanks that are rolling there to the, to the, to the line of contact in Donbass. And, and that's a serious situation, guys. Donbass is a serious situation. And why? Because in Donbass, this is what they're doing in order to try to bring Russia up to fight in Ukraine so that NATO can justify their own preemptive strike. So we shared this with you. And if you go back to our video that we speak of, that we're, not the video where I first did this and show these tanks here, but the one right after about the, uh, uh, the Ukrainian tanks are, you know, in a standoff with Russia. I actually put the link to the to where this video can be found. Now you got to dig through it to find it because they're always updating new videos, etc. But this was actually from the front lines there where they were bringing the tanks in. All right, now. That's only one thing. Now let's go back and look at who this guy, Vladimir Zaronovsky, who he is from the Wikipedia page about him. He's an, a Russian politician and political activist. He is a colonel in the Russian army, founder, and I, I assume that's former colonel, founder and the leader of the Liberal Democratic Party of Russia, a member of the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe, and was twice in 2004 and, and 2000 elected Deputy Speaker of the Duma. So what the man says carries a lot of weight, and he is saying that President Obama is going to push, is, is about to push uh, this whole situation into a first strike situation where Russia may end up striking first. Now, give you some of the reasons why we could end up in this type of conflict. Sea breeze in the Black Sea. All right, this was, the, uh, this was the exercise they did here just a few days ago. They had all kinds of warships there in the Black Sea, and they did it intentionally right near Svesterpool, and that's where the Russian Navy is located at. 
July 21st near uh, Whidbey Island. Black Sea became an American ship landing July 22nd. The USS destroyer Ross is expected to pass into the Black Sea. Combat equipped with, with information control system for missile defense, Aegis cruise missiles, Tomahawk, and anti-aircraft and anti-submarine missiles. It comes not, not just, of course, you can't expect a ship to go unarmed. So, I mean, I'm not saying that they should be unarmed, but they are coming prepared for war. And not only that, guys, look, this, this right here, the image on your screen right now, this is what's happening in the Mediterranean Sea. In the Russian news article where I found this at right here, Russia says that the United States is showing their muscle in the Mediterranean. And of course, they're both antagonizing one another. I mean, anything could, could ignite a war. Then you also have uh, in TASS uh, news, Russia to deliver S-400 anti-aircraft missiles to the Crimea grouping in August of this year. That was reported on July 15th. Now, let me just, I want to share with you something here. I thought I had it up here, but I guess I did not. Let me take you real quick. Give me one second. Let's go and look at the video where Zaranovsky is actually speaking about this conflict that we may go into on Russian television. One second. Has already approached the beginning of the possible war. 95% is left. If Russia is scared, the war won't happen. If Russia isn't scared, the war will happen. This is the question, isn't it? That's the commentator. Right, I've been already told about that a year ago. Why does he call this a summit crucial? Is it the reason? Exactly. Last year they have already planned that. The situation would become aggravated in the summer of 2016 to the maximum. They would issue an ultimatum. We would have to either agree or do what they, what they saw right. The most dangerous is Warsaw's NATO summit in July. After it, either we retreat or they step back. There is no other way. We've reached the climax. That's it. Either there is a war or they retreat. Chief editor of Moscow's German newspaper, you said that we had already overcome 95% of the way towards the war. I don't understand. Why do you think so? Are you from Germany, he asked? Yes, I am. Get ready for mobilization. You may criticize the actions of NATO in the East. It's the German newspaper guy. They think that they can lessen the military threat by that. They are not attacking Russia. You shouldn't treat it as an attack. They are not attacking, okay, so you seriously think that they're deploying NATO's bases of the Russian borders, you lessen the threat. That's what he asked their German guy. Russian society politicians in particular needed to understand why NATO thinks so. So you, we need to disarm before NATO and start seeing into your, into your problems. They have arguments, the, the German guy says. They are not crazy. We need to help. The Baltic states and Poland to appease that. Then start to buy the Baltic Sprat. Why are we deploying missiles there instead of buying their Sprat? Start buying it. Why don't you eat Sprat? That's what the uh, guy asked, asked the German guy. Yes, there is a tension. Help them with money. Help the Baltic states in Poland, the, the commentator says. Help them with money. Help the Baltic states. There is indeed a sign of tension. Vladimir Volokha, what did you want to say? And you rather listen to him? I guess you know the history of your country. The war started on June 21st, 1941. Why? German troops came up to the Soviet borders. I think we don't need such a, a comparison, says the German guy. Stop. If German troops, the Soviet border, there wouldn't be. Show me any German Hitler now, says the German newspaper guy. I have actually asked how the World War II started. We know it's how it started. And now NATO's forces have come to the Russian border. Show me any NATO's Hitler. How is his, who is his name? Or who is his name is what it should say. Any of them, including Americans. You have already done in June 2016 all that had happened. In June 1941, I'm not saying that you are going to attack. Tomorrow you are bluffing and scaring us. You believe that. People like Kudrin and any other fifth column will say let's step back don't you understand that we will never retreat again never you're going to end up in a bad way you're going to get yourself into a preemptive strike when there will remain nothing at all from both german and nato troops honestly all that has scared us that's the host saying this 
Not us. Nothing scared us. Europeans are afraid. Let them be afraid. Let Polish Germans be afraid. All of them. Then they will stand against us. But now they are imposed on an idea that they are safe as part of NATO and opposite the more. NATO soldiers are in your territory. The faster you are all going to die. To the last man, remove NATO from your territory. Remove NATO from your territory. As he said, or you're all going to die. Guys, I don't know. I, I, honestly, I, I, I can't even begin to tell you what is the answer to this situation. We know that Vladimir Putin has said if Hillary Clinton is elected, there definitely is going to be war. If Donald Trump is elected, then war will probably be averted. In fact, there is also uh, in EU news uh, today that, excuse me, not EU, it's actually Russian news, that if uh, Donald Trump had become president, if he becomes president, that he will probably disband NATO, or at least the United States would leave NATO. I can tell you one thing. They're not going to allow, the New World Order agenda is not going to allow the United States to leave NATO. That is one of the strongest Roman forces that NATO has. And we are seeing a former colonel of the Russian military, a politician, well-respected man in Russia, saying that Russia is not going to blink. They're not going to back down. And NATO does not appear to, that it's going to back down either. They're building up faster than what you can imagine. One of the things that was stated in the article that really concerned me as well well, two things. One, even what you see in, in, in what he stated here on your screen. They knew about this. They knew that things would escalate this year, 2016. I have read in other Russian news sources that state Russia is, is and we've shared it already on Israeli News Live, Russia is anticipating an attack on its own country this summer either in August, late August, somewhere in that area there. Russian news has even said that because of the failing U.S. economy that it would justify a war on Russia just to try to bail out its economy. That Obama will do it before he leaves office. Guys, it's not good. I don't know, uh, as the one guy says in the article here, as we brought this out a little bit earlier, that um, Putin recently rebuked corrupt Western media and their role in fueling nuclear war. Putin said that Russia will not allow the stationing of American missiles in Poland and Romania. Uh, it's not the part I was actually looking for, but what I was looking for is where um, Putin is trying to get, he's trying to warn the media, hoping that the media might change public opinion to get the United States to pull back with the NATO forces on its border. I don't think it's going to happen. And now we see Russian officials speaking about a first strike. That's going to drive even the United States even more so to, do, to want to do its own preemptive strike with that type of rhetoric coming out of Russia. And neither military willing, willing to blink. Do you, did you not see what Vladimir Putin just did recently where he fired 50 of, his, of some of his top commanders because they would not stand up to NATO forces? They're not going to back down. It's a serious situation. It's an hour for prayer. It's a time for being serious. And they know as well, the Muslim crisis in Europe 
in America. They even know this is nothing but a setup for the European Union and for the United States to, to strike fear in the people so the people become subservient to a new world order. Germany and now is talking about basically martial law, deploying its own military troop on its streets. You don't think that's not like a former day of Nazism? And they're talking about it. Why? Because of the fear of the Muslim crisis. And the people will accept it. It's getting real serious, friends. Very serious. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom.